Welcome to episode number two of the Kansas City Suburbs Showdown. On this series, we take some of the most popular Kansas City suburbs that you all are asking about, and we pit them against each other so you can identify the biggest differences, which one makes the most sense for you, and also the hidden little gems that only locals know about. In this one, we're covering Overland Park versus Lenexa, both very popular suburbs on the Kansas side. And if you stick around until the end, we'll uncover a shocking difference in home prices in Lenexa versus Overland Park. Let's get started. Now, one of my biggest goals on this series is just to avoid stating the obvious. I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, then you've already had sort of an introduction to the Kansas City area in both of these suburbs independently. In the event that you haven't, I'll leave links to those videos down in the description below. But let's go ahead and get started with the location. So number one, here's a video of the map. and You can see exactly where Lenexa is next to Overland Park. So it's just to the west of Overland Park, and it runs right up alongside North Overland Park. So long story short, if Lenexa was part of Overland Park, it'd be like the western wing of it. Now we will talk about the real estate in these areas, but alongside the edges of where both of these cities meet in North Overland Park, a lot of those homes were built at the same time period. So the later half of the 1950s, they both are in the Shawnee Mission School District, which we'll cover here in just a second. But where these cities meet along I-35 is around the Oak Park Mall, Costco, Sam's Club, all your bulk shopping. So long story short, residents from both cities will end up meeting in the middle to do their shopping, if not several times a month, at least several times a year. Now, the one little local tidbit that I wanna leave you with, at least in terms of the location, is that people who live in Overland Park have very, very little to reason to leave because everything's right there. A lot of them will. Maybe they'll go to the Plaza, downtown Kansas City. Maybe they'll go to the Lenexa Rec Center or the city center. But most of the time, there's, there's less of a reason to leave Overland Park than there is Lenexa. And while Lenexa is its own like entire city and you wouldn't have to leave if you didn't want to, a lot of people will find themselves maybe going south into Olathe or maybe they'll be going into Overland Park to do some of the shopping in some of the places that we'll discuss later in this video. So basically, if you want to never leave the city, Overland Park might be for you. If you want everything close by within about 10 to 15 minutes, either of these cities will certainly do. Number two is all about the feel of each city. What are some observations that you might have if you were exploring each of these for the first time. Now, these aren't just like totally subjective based on my opinion, although a little bit of them are. It's based on working with clients who have tried to choose between both of these cities, reading reviews from residents, talking to existing residents, and of course, the secret weapon, which is reddit.com. You would never believe it, but type in reddit plus whatever city you want opinions on. You're going to get the full unfiltered scoop, and that's what we're going to go through here. So the, both of these cities feel very clean, safe. They've got pretty good schools. They're very comparable on those marks. Although, you you know, there might be some ticky tacky differences. Well, oh, we want to be in the Blue Valley School District. We'll talk about that one in just a second. But I do want to point out the biggest difference is that Overland Park is more populated. It feels more dense than Lenexa is. So if you're looking for a very quiet city, you're going to find more of that in Lenexa. But you've probably noticed that my wording is very careful because in North and Central Overland Park, it's going to be a little bit more dense. But when you get to the Southern parts of Overland Park around like Stillwell, Kansas, that's where all of the development is right now. So while that was certainly rural and just farmland about 10, 20 years ago, that's changing very quickly. It's not going to feel rural anymore, but it will offer more of a quiet, small town feel in a big city that you can find in most parts of Lenexa. Now, by no means is the hustle and bustle of Overland Park at all comparable to what you'd find downtown. It is just going to be a little bit more populated. And as a result of that, you're going to lose a little bit of the quietness you'd find in, in South Overland Park or Lenexa. Now, the second big difference is if you're the outdoorsy type. When it comes to Overland Park, and this is not a knock on Overland Park, the, the marginal difference between these is, is very small, but when it comes to parks, trails, etc., you're going to have a lot of those in Overland Park, but also a lot of the green space has already been developed. That's less true of Lenexa. So for example, if you were to pull up the map in Overland Park, you're going to see a lot of smaller neighborhood parks, and then the major patches of green space, aside from the Arboretum and Botanical Gardens, which again is in South Overland Park, you're going to see a lot Lot of golf courses, which if you're a golfer, yeah, Overland Park certainly could hit the mark. But the, a lot of the green space that you'll find in Lenexa is actually dedicated to, to parks like Shawnee Mission Park, which yes, falls in Shawnee as well. But just because of that whole area, Shawnee included, you're going to find a little bit more green space because there's still a lot of room for development that you would see in those northern and central parts of Overland Park. So long story short, Lenexa, for the most part,
part is going to be a little bit quieter, less people around, a little bit more green space. Overland Park totally depends on the area of it, but it's generally going to be a little bit more dense and maybe a little bit quicker of a pace, but they're all very comparable. It's hard to draw a finite distinction between them. Well, Lenexa has a little bit more green space than Overland Park. Overland Park has a few more options that you can go shopping. So we're going to break those down in this section number three, which are the shops. So not only do you have Oak Park Mall, which we're going to call a wash for both sides because they're at basically the border of Lenexa. You've got Costco in Lenexa, and we're just going to call it a tie for both sides. But in Overland Park, you've got plenty more options to shop for. Not to say that there's a huge shortage in Lenexa, it's just Overland Park's big. There are a lot of places that you can go. So you've got downtown Overland Park with a lot of locally owned businesses and restaurants. If you go south to 135th Street, you've got Prairie Fire, which is sort of a newer development. You've got like a chicken pickle. You've got a bunch of other really good stores, restaurants that you can go to out there as well. And then of course, this is kind of in Leewood, but it's along the edge of Overland Park. So we're to call this a win for Overland Park, which is Town Center. This is a more higher end shopping center. You've got Park Place there as well, which yes, is in Leewood, but it's so close to the edge, the eastern edge of Overland Park that it certainly can't be counted as a win for Lenexa. You have to go through Overland Park to get there. So that's kind of how this all shakes out. Now, where Lenexa kind of hits back and pushes back against this a little bit is the city's investment into the residents' well-being. So there are two very tangible sides of this. One is the Lenexa City Center. There are even a lot of residents of Overland Park that will travel the like 10 to 15 minutes at most to the Lenexa City Center because of it. So this is a multi-million dollar project. You've got a brand new Johnson County Library there. You've got an aquatic center, a fitness center. You've got the public market, which are basically a bunch of micro restaurants all under one roof. There's live music sometimes on the weeknights and weekends. And then of course, you've got Old Town Lenexa, which here's an article from the Shawnee Mission Post that breaks this down. They've been working on revamping the old community center, which is nearly a 10 million dollar project. So that'll happen in the next several years, I'm sure. But this just goes to show the amount of effort, the amount of money Lenexa's government is, is spending to increase the well-being of its residents. Number four is all about the schools. And I already know this is probably going to be one of the most watched parts of the video. Overland Park, it's home to the Blue Valley School District, one of the highest rated districts in the entire country. It's ranked in the top 50. It's number one in the Kansas City area, number one in the state of Kansas. It's really highly rated. Rated. But I do want to let you know that all of the school districts in this area that we'll discuss in this video, they're all very highly rated. They're all in like the top percentile of school districts across the state of Kansas in the Kansas City Metro. And the differences can be really specific and almost like splitting hairs. So Blue Valley is a dedicated school district in Overland Park, but there are two other school districts that you should know about, especially at North Overland Park, which is the Shawnee Mission School District. So right where Lenexa borders Olathe, you're going to find yourself in the Shawnee Mission school district in that part of Lenexa as well. This is the fourth best rated school district according to niche.com out of all of the ones we'll discuss in this video, but again, kind of like splitting hairs. So while Blue Valley is unique to Overland Park, Lenexa is a smaller city. It doesn't have its own dedicated school district. So you're served by Shawnee Mission. On the Northwestern corner, you're served by the DeSoto School District, which is technically, according to niche.com, ranked number two, so second to Blue Valley. And then the Southern part of Lenexa, near where it borders Olathe, is served by the Olathe Public Schools, very highly rated, comes in at number three, according to niche.com. Now, the last school district that serves Overland Park that we'll mention here is the Spring Hill School District. The only way you'd be in the Spring Hill School District is if you were at the very southern edges of Overland Park, specifically on the western side. So Spring Hill School District, as you can see, the rating is not as high as you'd probably like to see it, but I can tell you it's developing very quickly, and it's kind of following the footsteps that the Blue Valley District was in, just like five, maybe 10 10 years ago. So long story short, there are a lot of different school districts and the boundaries are often very, very confusing. So when it comes time to actually start looking for different homes, go ahead and reach out so we can just X off the areas that you don't want to be involved in and we can make the process so much easier. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, then let me know by hitting that like button below, subscribe for more updates just like this, because I'm going to build out a video for pretty much all of the popular cities that everyone is looking for comparisons on. I want you to be one of the people who sees it. Of 
course, there's also a gift that I have for you in the description. It's totally free. I put together a snapshot, a total guide for relocating to Kansas City and picking the best suburb. So in that guide, you'll find a lot of this information all in one spot. I've also linked you to other videos and other resources that can be really helpful to you. So go ahead in the description, go ahead and check that out. Make sure you download it, take a look. My goal is that it's a shortcut and speeds up your research. Part number five is the cost of living and then we'll get into housing. But we've got to kind of wrap these together because we're going to cut right to the chase. I'm going to tell you Overland Park is generally going to be a little more expensive and it mostly comes down to home prices. So really quickly, let me show you the general cost of living compared. Here's a picture of the map. You can see the shading in Overland Park is very similar to the shading in Lenexa and you don't really see that drop off until you see Shawnee and Olathe and some of the surrounding cities. The biggest difference really just comes down to the housing cost. But the reason why I say that Overland Park is going to be a little more expensive is because of that Blue Valley School District. It's a magnet that attracts everybody trying to relocate to the area. And it's where everybody starts when they do their research on moving to Kansas City. So as a result of that, the demand for living in Overland Park is higher. There are fewer opportunities when it comes to housing because everybody's trying to buy up those homes. You're going to have more competition. You might end up paying a little bit more to live there than you would Lenexa. But I'm going to show you a concrete example and put this into very specific terms so you can see the exact dollar difference that you could be paying when you choose to live in Lenexa versus Overland Park or vice versa. Now, the next part of this is just the home prices. So I'm going to show you the typical home value according to Zillow for Lenexa and Overland Park. And then I want to show you, I'm going to kind of drill down a little bit and show you the exact differences. So what I've done is I've pulled a property in Lenexa. I found the closest, most comparable property in Overland Park, and we're going to dissect the differences so you can see exactly what you're getting for your money in each of these cities. So up first, this is the typical home value in Lenexa, around $414,000. And then here's the typical home value for Overland Park, around 417. The difference, pretty marginal. I'd say it's kind of a wash, but let's really set this difference into stone for you. So here's the first property that we'll talk about from Lenexa. You can see this is priced at $640,000, four beds, four baths, 2,700 square feet. Now there are a couple things that I wanna explain here. There are a couple distinctions we've gotta make. Number one, this is a model home. So with model homes, they're doing all of the upgrades, they're putting their best foot forward because this is the model that they're selling all the other homes in a new home community based on. So they're definitely spending a little bit more. As a result, these homes are going to cost a little bit more. So long story short, this is the higher end cost of this type of home that you'd see in Lenexa. Now, a couple other things I wanna draw your attention to. One is the HOA fee. These are very basic amenities that you'll find in any other new home community, 500 bucks a month. That's pretty good. It's certainly lower than what you'd see in Overland Park, but the Overland Park example, there's kind of a distinction that we'll have to ignore. So the acreage, you can see your 0.3 acres. This is around 13,000 square feet of land. It's a pretty big size lot. It's just not something that you're going to be able to find in many places in Overland Park. Now, the last thing that I want to bring to your attention, this is in the western part of Lenexa. So it falls in the DeSoto School District, which if you remember back to the school section is rated number two after Blue Valley. So here's the example from Overland Park. This is the closest one I could find on the market, priced at 685. This one is not the model. It's four beds, four bath, and 2550 square feet. So it's around $45,000 more expensive than the model home from Lenexa that has more expensive upgrades packed into it. And that's all for 150 less square feet. Now, a couple distinctions. This is in the Blue Valley School District. The HOA fee of 1350 that you see is because this is in Sundance Ridge. It's one of the best and newest new home communities in Overland Park. I'll link a whole video below to it. The amenities, they just blew them out of the water. So that's why it's so expensive. But if you look, that 13,000 square foot lot that we had in Lenexa now is less than 10,000 square feet in Overland Park. We're talking about over a $30 price per square foot difference for just the home Blue Valley versus DeSoto Schools, Overland Park versus Lenexa. Again, a $45,000 difference. And this is one of the more expensive homes of this size that you'll find in Lenexa. So in concrete terms, I know this is one example, it's one case study, but this is kind of the trend that you'll see as you follow homes in both of these respective markets. So there you have it, the biggest difference 
differences between living in Overland Park versus living in Lenexa, Kansas. Make sure you subscribe because I'm going to keep doing this series. We're going to pit some of the most popular suburbs against each other. I am always open to suggestions. So if there's one that you really want to see compared, leave a comment below and I will make sure that I get on that video as soon as possible. If you've enjoyed this video, if you found it insightful or helpful, let me know by hitting that like button below. Of course, if you are in the market to purchase a home, whether you're local in Kansas City and just planning an intercity move or whether you're moving from another state, I would love to work with you and explain a little bit more of these differences in detail and personalized to you and your situation. And if that sounds good and you'd like to have a conversation, all my contact info is below. Give me a call, text, or email. We can get it on the schedule and make sure we give you all the information that you're really looking for. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you on the next one.